From the sky, it was a story on an epic scale. Cities, towns and villages underwater. On the ground, it was a story of survival. Got the kids, threw some clothes on and we ran for our lives. And we've got no bread and no water now. It was a story of heartbreak. How are you feeling? No, not... Not brilliant. No. Not brilliant at all. And it was a story of heroism. See you when. We've got a message of five people need to come out. This man is Julian Jenkins, who was the watch manager at Evesham Station on the 20th of July last year. He returned a year on to the village of Sedgeborough, where he'd coordinated the rescue of more than 60 people by boat and helicopter. Standing where we're standing now, we would be underwater. We'd be, my head would be two feet underwater. People were standing on chairs in their kitchens with the water up to their waist. It must have been absolutely terrifying for them. It was probably up to about your guttering, I believe, wasn't it? Firefighter Mark Frost was in one of the rescue boats. To actually get through, we actually came through this gap in the hedge here above the hedgerow. Um, on a boat? Yeah, on a boat, yeah, which is quite surreal. We got out from the bedroom window just at the top. So by the fire rescue people, which I cannot praise enough, really. We come back quite often in the village. If, if we've got people on the station, just bring them back and show them what it was like, because it's unless you were actually here on the day, I don't think you'll ever believe how deep it was or, or what it was actually like to be here. The fire service rescued almost 1,200 people that weekend. The force of the water was extraordinary. The M50 resembled a canal, and thousands of motorists were trapped on the M5. Mike Gilmore from Stafford was among them. It was complete devastation. It was totally alien to, to anything that anybody had ever experienced. I tried to get out and, and give people help and, and sort of a bit of guidance because I was ahead of them. I could see what was coming on. And so once we got off, it was, uh, it was utter relief. In Ludlow, a bridge collapsed, as did the home of Sol and Doreen Pierce. It seems a bit odd to see, it, see a blank spot now. A year on, only the foundations remain. We're moving on, that's the main thing, and uh, it does seem a, a tragedy, but uh, I suppose, as I've said before, we were the lucky ones, really. We've got somewhere else, like, away from the river. Brian and Delia White are still living in a caravan after their home in Wickenford near Evesham was flooded. They share it with their son and two dogs. I lost my daughter 15 years ago, and it's nothing worse than losing a child. Out of ten, that's a ten. But I would say this is getting on for about a seven what it's done. I feel that if you didn't have a strong marriage, you could end up parting, don't you think so? Easy. Easy. Very, very trying. From Hampton Bishop to Henley in Arden, from Upton on Severn to Tewkesbury and Gloucester, the impact of the flooding one year on is still being felt. Kath Mackey, BBC Midlands Today.